In the head-to-head -head series, I show you two different patients with two different diseases, but similar radiologic appearance. You have to decide what the two diagnoses are. This one is such a classic radiologic differential that I was sure I had already done this in a head-to-head. -head. I had to go back and convince myself that it didn't already exist, but I think it's new. Here's patient number one on this enhanced neck CT. Here's the mass. Look at its relationship to all of the surrounding structures and decide what you think it is. If you're having trouble finding the jugular vein, it's actually out here. This is patient one, a little lower down. Now you can see the jugular vein more, more clearly. Right? And there's the internal carotid and here is the mass. Here's patient number two. Again, look at the surrounding anatomy and decide where you think this originated and what you think it is. Once again, I'll give you the jugular vein. It's right there. It can be hard to distinguish from the, uh, from the rest of the mass, but it's easy when you look at sequential images, so I'll just give it to you. Another picture of the same lesion. Now the jugular vein, a little easier to identify, a little lower down in the neck. Okay, here's patient one and patient two next to each other so you can compare them head to head. Now would be a good time to pause the video and see if you can figure out what these two diagnoses are. First, let's talk about what they have in common. This is the styloid process, and you can see that this mass starts behind the styloid process and comes out. It displaces the peripharyngeal fat anteriorly right, anteriorly and maybe a little bit medially. We associate this with the post-styloid parapharyngeal space. This mass does the same thing. It tucks behind the styloid process, post-styloid parapharyngeal space, again, pushing the parapharyngeal fat anteriorly and a little bit medially. Post-styloid parapharyngeal space, we associate this with neurovascular lesions. That is pseudoaneurysms, schwannomas, neurofibromas, paragangliomas, neurovascular lesions because they're arising within the carotid space, within the carotid sheath, when they are in the post-styloid parapharyngeal space. Let's also look at the relationship to the vasculature. The internal carotid artery and the internal jugular vein are being displaced away from one another and maybe a little bit anteriorly in the case of the uh, internal carotid artery, definitely on this side. So we know that this is something that occurred between the internal carotid artery and the internal jugular vein within the carotid sheath. And there's something that lives right there, and that is the vagus nerve. So what these two patients have in common is something that seems to have arisen from the expected location of the vagus nerve. What's different about them? The most obvious thing, I think, is their enhancement pattern. There is uniform enhancement throughout this mass, and how enhancing is it? It's almost essentially the same enhancement as surrounding vessels. That's a lot of enhancement. Whereas in this mass, it's pretty heterogeneous. There's areas of enhancement and areas of non-enhancement geographically interspersed because of antony A and antony B cells in a schwannoma, whereas this extensive enhancement, when the enhancement matches the vessels, we start thinking about one of our most vascular lesions, the paraganglioma. So both of these lesions arose along the course of the vagus nerve in between the jugular vein and the carotid artery along the course of the vagus nerve, but two different things arise from the vagus nerve paraganglioma arising from the vagal nerve and a schwannoma arising from the vagal nerve. 